In 1972, the U.S. American Space Agency, NASA, sent a spacecraft into space. The Pioneer 10. On board the Pioneer 10 was a message inscribed on a golden plaque for any aliens who might possibly intercept the spacecraft, an intergalactic message in a bottle. It was supposed to tell the extraterrestrials about us, the Earthlings, a man with a penis and a woman with nothing. We've been getting this wrong for too many years now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Bova. Okay, so let me introduce you to the vulva. This is the vaginal opening, the entry to the vagina that leads to the uterus. This is where pee comes out, the urethral opening. This is the glands of the clitoris and its foreskin, the prepuce. And if you're thinking, now what? Women have a foreskin? We talked about the clitoris in episode two. And those are the labia. Let's see what these parts do. Now you've probably noticed that the vulva is normally warm and moist. That's because the vagina is not only the entry to the uterus, but also the exit for different fluids. There are three forms of vaginal fluid. Number one, the daily secretion. It helps to prevent infections and can also change depending on the moment uh, of the menstrual cycle. Number two is sexual lubrication. This uh, fluid uh, filters out of the blood during the stimulation and helps uh, to lubricate the vagina. Number three is the vaginal ejaculation and it contains proteins which help the sperm to survive. So the vagina even cleans itself. There's no need to try to wash it with special products or anything like soap or shower gel. Only water is enough and the best. Then we've got the labia. They keep everything safe in here. The labia are like a set of double doors. We have first the outer labia and then the inner labia and they protect us against bacteria and other intruders. The outer labia, they produce lubrication and help us to keep our vulva and vagina healthy. And the inner labia, they have many blood vessels and nerve endings and swell up when we are getting stimulated. They are very sensitive. But if we're honest, we don't often see other women's vulvas, sometimes not even our own. So there are many weird ideas on what the labia should look like. There's even a whole market around cosmetic surgery for the labia. Some women think they should get surgery to chop off a part of their labia. Others just want to stretch them and make them longer. What the hell? You're in both cases hurting a very important and sensitive part of your body. And both, cutting and stretching, they make absolute no sense. There simply is no such thing as the perfect vulva. They all are different. The inner levy can be big and the outer small, or the outer big and the inner small. And they can have many colors, shapes and sizes. And they all are amazing. And because the vulva is so sensitive, it's not only protected by two pairs of labia, but also by a nice hairy covering. The pubic hair is not just a useless wig for your vulva. It's actually really helpful. It can protect you from germs and infections, but also from friction from whatever you do, for example, sex. So it's actually kind of extra layer of protection. Of course, back in the days when there was no underwear, the protection offered by pubic hair was even more important. Today, some like to mow it down. Shaving your pubic hair might seem attractive and sexy for some, but it can also produce little wounds which can easily get infected, especially in the warmth of your underwear. So ladies, have a closer look at your vulva, get to know it. A mirror might help.